This is just a brief demonstration of how to create a reflection under an object. Sometimes it's also called the Apple effect because they've used it in their ads for years. Um, there's tons of videos about how to do this online that go into a lot more detail. This is just a very brief overview. I've opened up this object. First thing I notice is it's almost four by seven inches. That's probably way too big for how it's gonna end up being used. If I go to image size, I realize that it's huge at a very low resolution. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that this resample image button is turned off. And if I trade resolution for size by increasing the resolution from 72 to 300, the bag is going to become one by maybe one and five eighths, which is probably much closer to how it's actually going to show. I think it's a lot easier to work on the object at the resolution that you're going to pro and size that you're probably going to really end up using it. At that point, things like the blur number that you should end up using and stuff becomes a lot more kind of accessible. So I'm going to click OK on that. I also noticed, though, that the canvas size of this page or this image is cropped really tight. Uh, to the edge of the box and that's going to be very difficult for me to work with so I'm going to go up to image and I'm going to start to go to canvas size and then I look over here and I realize that the background color is black so I'm just going to get out of this and hit this button here to switch so that the background color is white it doesn't matter what the foreground color is for this when I go to canvas size whatever color is on the background is the color Photoshop is going to use to extend the rest of the image I'm just going to do something simple like I'm going to add one inch to the dimensions of this object. And I'm going to leave this button right here for now, which means it's expanding all the extra canvas size all the way around this. So now that I've got this, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and start working on cutting this object out. I'm going to go get the selection tool. I'm going to make sure that my brush is reasonably hard. Don't have to worry about it being 100%, but just something toward the hard edge of that. Increase the size of the brush. I need to make sure I've actually got the quick selection tool to do that. And once I've got this selection going, I'm going to go ahead and hold the option button down to make the tool become a minus symbol so that I can go ahead and get rid of some of this extra stuff that popped up. Then I'm going to go ahead and hit the Q button to put it in a quick mask mode so that I can kind of stir at what I've got. As I start to do this, I realize how bespeckled the edge of this object is, which must mean it was a really low rough scan to begin with. I can also see some areas that are not being covered. I'm going to flip my ink to black and with just the paintbrush tool, again making sure that the brush hardness is fairly hard. I'm going to go ahead and extend that a tiny little bit. Get rid of some of that junk that I just made. Once I've done that, I could spend a lot of time trying to clean up the edge, So, what I, but what I think I'm gonna end up doing is I'm just gonna end up clipping the bag a little tighter, and that'll kind of solve my problem. So I'm gonna hit Q to get out of this. I'm gonna go back to one of the selection tools. Any one of the tools that I can use for selection allows me to access this Refine Edges box. If I click on it, I'm going to go ahead and I kind of like this view being in black. It kind of shows you just how bad it really is. I'm going to first move to smooth the edge of the object. And my on-screen preview of this tool is not really working in this version of Photoshop all that well. And I'm going to go ahead. That's going to help get rid of some of the deviation of sliding back and forth so that it's a little bit cleaner edge. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to slide the shift edge to a negative number. In this case, we'll just see what negative 22 looks like. And then I'm going to go ahead and tell it to make a new layer with layer mask. And then just so that I can check to see what the object looks like, I'm going to make a new layer by clicking on the new layer icon. I'm going to come over here to the foreground. <clears throat> I'm going to pick any kind of color. I'm going to hit Command A to select all of that. And I can either go Edit, Fill, and select the foreground color, which again was my blue that I picked over here. Or I could simply hold down the tiny option button and hit delete and it'll fill that expanse with that color. I'm going to drag it underneath my object and let go and stare at it. And I'm going to decide that it's fine. So I'm going to hide this. Now all I end up needing to do is I need room to be able to make the reflection. So I'm going to go back up to edit canvas size. I'm going to click on this top button and I'm going to basically double the size of the image or come close to it. By clicking this top button, it's going to force all the additional canvas I make to move down. 
So now I should end up having something like this. I'm going to go ahead and hold the command button down and click on the mask that I have around the bag. And then I'm also going to realize that I've got an awful lot of extra white that's now on this because I changed the canvas after the fact. So actually I'm going to go back over here, click on the mask, not the image, but the mask. I'm going to just take the rectangle tool and I'm going to go ahead and draw a box down. across the bottom and option delete it by filling with black. I should be able to notice the difference on my layer mask over here. Again, I'm going to go back and command click to select the area around the bag, but then I have to go back and click on the cat itself to make sure that that's what it's copying. And then I'm going to just simply go edit, copy, edit, paste. By doing that, it puts a duplicate on top of it. There's no mask on it, but I'm just using it for the reflection. So I don't really care that much. I'm going edit, transform, flip vertical to flip the bag. I'm going to get the arrow tool, start to move it straight down, add the shift button to kind of lock it in place so it doesn't wander off to the side. I'm going to put it basically right about where the bag is, but just to be on the safe side, I'm going to drop it and put it underneath my original top bag. <clears throat> then I'm going to come back and I can do several different functions. One would be go filter, blur, Gaussian blur. This one doesn't need to be blurred as much as what you would typically do for a drop shadow, so I'm going to use a much smaller number, but the reflection or on some kind of a surface is always more blurred. If you look at a lot of videos online, they're going to talk about how to make a second kind of a mask in addition to what I'm going to do next, which would allow the bag to be fairly sharp up toward the top and actually blur more the further it gets out. And that's probably a great extra step. I'm just not going to take the time to do that on this. So I'm going to blur this five. Then I'm pretty close to being done. What I need to do though is <clears throat> in order to make this fade out, I need to apply the gradient tool. But in order to do that, I actually have to have some kind of a mask on top of my reflection layer. So I'm gonna make sure I'm still on the reflection layer. I'm coming to the bottom of the layer palette and I'm hovering over this icon that's the gray box with the white circle on it that says add layer mask. When I click to add that, it's just gonna add a white mask because I have nothing selected. If I move back over to get the gradient tool and I make sure that my two colors are black to white, I can see that up in this bar. And then of all these different options up here of how to be able to use the gradient tool, you normally use the left hand one, which is a linear gradient. And then if I just come here and hold the tool down at the bottom of the bag and pull up, it will start to make it fade out. You can hit command Z and come back. If you'd like the reflection to be much shorter, you could start partway up the bag. But in this case, I'm going to basically start from the bottom of the bag and move almost all the way up to the top. Again, I could go back just to see what I'm doing and turn on my kind of proof layer that I made with blue ink just to see what it's doing. One last step that most people would suggest to do, and I think it's a good one, is to go ahead and click a new layer. And on this, to go ahead and either make an ellipse using the elliptical marquee tool or a circle, or you could go ahead and use the lasso tool and just draw a small circle about like this kind of right where the bags meet I click on this button right here to reset the foreground background to black and white I'm gonna hold down option delete to make the that particular shadow black filter blur Gaussian blur I'm gonna go ahead and crank this one back up a good amount in this case I'm just gonna let it go maybe at about 20 click OK normally this this type of shadow actually happens kind of between the two bags. So I'm going to shove this up between my bag layer and my reflection layer. And if I think it's too dark, I can change the opacity to make it lighter. And as I'm looking at this, I can definitely see that I still have a white ring, even with that shift edge thing in the refine edges. I still have a slight halo here, so I could always come back up to my actual bag mask, click on the mask. And if I was to paint with black ink, and zoom in just a bit on it. I could go ahead and rub across here and extend the mask or if you're trying to make a straight line I could actually hold the shift button down kind of shift click several spots in between maybe even move up just a tiny bit more to eliminate most of that kind of halo that's kind of popping up. And By painting with black on the actual mask remember I'm just decreasing the size of the mask on the original bag. 
So there I go. And if for some reason I think that the reflection is still too dark, rather than clicking to edit the mask layer, that's actually going to take away from the mask and bring more of the bag back. I would end up wanting to make sure that I was actually on the reflected bag here. And then again, I could change the opacity. I could fade that back a little. It'll still go ahead and represent my slight fading out that I've done so that the bag is getting lighter down here at the bottom. And then when I'm ready to save this, I'm just gonna turn I'm gonna turn off all layers I don't want, which in this case is my blue one and my background that originally had the white box around it. That way by seeing the gray and white checkers over here, this image is gonna come in transparent, including this, which will allow you to build it on top of another Photoshop file, InDesign file, Illustrator file, and add this color to whatever you're using in the background. And that's it.